In this lecture, we are going to learn about case control structure. So let us start with learning the syntax for case control structure, which is a keyword that instructs compiler that our case control structure is beginning from this point. So instead of parenthesis, we have a variable for which the cases will be planned. So this is the whole switch block. This is starting of your switch case and this ending parenthesis denotes ending of your switch case. So a switch block can have multiple cases like I have case one over here, case two over here and so on. We also have a default case whenever a case is not satisfied that default case is executed. So typically when a particular case is evaluated to be true, that case block is executed. If case does not match anywhere with the variable, then the default case is executed. So let us take a valid example. Assuming a value n which is provided by user, if n is equal to 1, then this case will be executed. Okay. So this case will be true and all the instructions which are inside of this case block will be executed. Alternatively, if n was equal to 2, then this block will be executed. If we assume that n was equal to 3, then these two cases will be ignored and this part will be executed. Let us take another example. I'm using a character variable over here as gender. Suppose user has entered m. In that case, this block will be executed. In case of f, this block will be executed. Else, the default case will be executed. Notice that the value expression I'm writing in single quote over here. Case control structure is preferred instead of nested if when you have multiple values to be evaluated. Only problem with switch case that we cannot write any conditions over here or here. In the next lecture, we will look into more details of a case control structure. We will also discuss break keyword which we have seen in the previous lecture and why using of break is necessary in case control structure.